All right, we're got a little project here. This is a base of a Smith and Wesson pancake light, and I uh, had a problem with it. I had a short in the wire here. These wires go through these holes. They were connected there as a single. Have these holders that hold them in place. So this wire sat in an S shape for about 36 years. I bought this light in 1980, and it sat on the dash of my car for about 10 years. And this wire on the left side had broken in here, and I had to position it certain ways to get it the power to run. So I wanted to fix this light, and I've gotten to this point, and I paused, and I thought, this is probably something some other people, information other people could use on how to fix these, because I want to maintain the original cord. I didn't want to have to replace the cord. And so I've come up with a technique that, that I think works pretty well to save your original cord. So that's what this video is going to be about and I'm going to show you what we're going to do. Now initially I tried to open this, this cord up. I used pins in here to figure out where the break was and found out it's right here where you most expect it. And I opened up the wire and I put some solder on there to reconnect it but that made it too stiff. So through some research and, and some trial and error we're going to do it a different way and we're going to go, I'm going to go over that as I do it. Another thing that was a nice trick is, because I had to cut this cord off, it was still cold like this. I used a heat gun to heat this, this plastic up and make it more pliable and had it stretch while it cooled back down and was able to re-straighten the wire so that I could use it here easier because it was hard. It's going to be very difficult to use a cold wire to go up into these holes. So that's where we're at and let me get some things up and I'll show you what I've done to this point. Okay, first thing we're going to need to do once we've, we've cut and exposed our wires is we have to do what's called tinning. And I've already tinned these wires, so I'm going to go back and show you what, what I did using this one here. And tinning merely involves coating this wire with, with soldering. Let's turn the light on here so we can see a little better. And all we do is we heat up this wire. We want to make the wire be able to be soldered together to another one. So we heat this wire up and touch our solder to it. And the solder will soak in and absorb into the strands of the wire and become tinned. Now you can see there that that is, is a solid piece now. And what that allows us to do is to take two of these pieces with solder, put them together and tap another little piece of solder in there and they will become one continuous wire. So that's what we're going to try with these wires now. And let's go to that next step. All right. One thing I want to do is I want these wires to be the same length as these. So I'm going to need to snip off a little bit of this. Make them about the same length. So that those will connect evenly. Let's shorten that one just a tad bit more. Right, now the fun part of this is going to be I got to do this through this hole. And before I do that, there's one more thing I got to do. Hang on just a minute. All right, something I want to do before I put this together is I have these heat shrimp heat shrink tubings. Say that three times fast. And I'm going to cut some small lengths of this. Get out of the range, I apologize. I'm going to slip these on here so that we can seal that off once we get those soldered together. Alright. I'm going to bring this up through here. And you have to make sure that you know 
which wires that you are connecting up. Okay, make sure you know which wire is which. I know which one my posi wire is supposed to be. So use a continuity tester and make sure you know which one of your wires is your positive. I'm going to slide this one back off right now so I know for certain that this is, is my positive. It needs to go to this wire here on the right. So we're going to work on this one first. We're going to, with difficulty, bring these together. Hopefully the camera is going to be able to see this as, as it happens here. Of course it would only break in a hard spot to access. It wouldn't do it in a convenient, convenient spot. So I'm going to heat both of these up and allow the solder to contact. You don't want to get your finger in there. I'm going to heat those up. Just let that solder meld between the two pieces. And now that is one continuous piece of wire. If you want to be a little extra secure on that, just drop a little extra solder on it. Just make sure you got a nice solid weld there. And now we have a good continuous wire there. And I can pr prove that to myself. Now that's going straight to the positive contact. So now I've restored power. I've restored power to that light. Okay. And now we have to connect reconnect the other side. See if we can adjust the camera, see that a little bit better this time. Alright. So we're going to bring these two ends together. And this is a lot easier if you didn't happen to do it in a hole. If your wires are in a better spot, this is a whole lot easier. Right, we're going to bring those two together. Remember they have both been tinned, so they have plenty of solder. And heat those up, let that solder liquefy and mesh. Don't touch the fingers. Ouch. And again we have a nice solid wire. So now we have two good continuous wires there to work with. And, and this is different from the side. This is the positive out, on, out here. That's the ground. Shouldn't have anything out here. Not from the ground. The positive does. All right. So our wires are reconnected and of course if you're watching you know exactly what I did. Hang on. Okay. Now we can look here we can see that we have two nice solid connected pieces of wires. So now we're going to slide 
our shrink wrap up into place. A little difficulty. Shrink wrap not only is going to help hold this joint, but it's, it also goes ahead and insulates it a lot better than trying to wrap tape around there would do. So you can get the other side up on there. This is quarter inch shrink wrap. I probably could have went a little larger on that. There we go. Pull that up on there all the way. Make sure we don't have any solder exposed and we'll get the heat gun. Hang on. Okay. So we're going to make sure our shrink wrap is positioned good. We don't want to see any metal on either side. Let's take our heat gun. going to shrink it right to it. Doesn't take a lot. And now we have good sealed reconnected wires. We can even put these fasteners back in here now which holds this wire in place also keeps the wire push down so the spinning motor doesn't hit it. These are a little worn so they snap back in place pretty easy. Alright, now I will reassemble the light, get everything back together and we'll come back and we'll test try it in just a minute. All right, we uh, have the light all back together. All I have to do is set this on here and put this spring clamp in there. I didn't film that because I usually have to chase this spring clamp three or four times around the room and it's a little embarrassing. So, bulbs back in. Let's plug it in and see if we were successful. Wonderful. And before, if I wiggled this wire at all, it would not come on. All right, it's working really well. The wire, I can move that wire around and it has no effect on it. This thing keeps hitting my finger over here. And uh, we can put it back together and put it back up on its display shelf. All right, she's back in her position of display. Plug her in. And the fourth kind of lady.